You could find any food that's out there and pull some component of it to say that it's anti-inflammatory. Okay, but this video is not going to be like that. This video is about giving you the true most anti-inflammatory foods. Okay, you see, I could grab a Snickers bar and I could be like, hey, there's chocolate in the Snickers bar, so there's anti-inflammatory properties. And would that mean the Snicker bar is healthy? No, absolutely not. So the purpose here is to give you the true, truly anti-inflammatory foods. So what we've done is we've broken down categories. So I'll give you the top anti-inflammatory food in the protein category, then in the vegetable category, in the dairy category, in the beverages category, and then in the overall fats category. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive in. Please do hit that red subscribe button and then hit that little bell icon as well so you always get notifications. All right, let's jump in. So salmon is going to make the mark as the number one protein when it comes to the anti-inflammatory world, okay? Obviously, we know it's high in omega-3s. I don't need to just beat that absolutely to death, right? Okay, omega-3s, EPA, DHA, really, really powerful when it comes down to inflammation modulation within the body. But the British Journal of Pharmacology published an interesting study. Okay, they found that omega-3s actually inhibit the transcription factor of nuclear factor kappa B. Okay, what that means is you're basically changing the body's ability to respond to inflammation. So nuclear factor kappa B is kind of the trickle down, right? It's like the war plan for inflammation in your body. So the interesting thing is that salmon makes it so that this war plan never gets written in the first place. Uh, if you've ever seen the older movie called Minority Report where they can predict crimes before they happen, that's kind of what the EPA and DHA allow your body to do. So very, very powerful. Plus, they convert into what are called resolvins. Now, resolvins, just like the name implies, I want you to think of this. If you go to the gym and you inflict a lot of inflammation on your tissues by working out really intensely, well, you're gonna have inflammation, but then it's gonna resolve over time. Well, resolvins are what bring that back to homeostasis. Okay, so really simple. They resolve the inflammation. But salmon is cool because it has an additional component that works with the omega-3s. It's like you could just pop a fish oil and be good to go there. But salmon has something known as asaxanthin. Asaxanthin is what gives salmon the red pigment, and it's extremely powerful when it comes to anti-inflammatory mechanisms. You see, it works in a couple different avenues. First, it has a free radical oxygen capacity 6,000 times that of vitamin C, meaning it can neutralize so much in the way of free radicals, but it's also an epic multitasker. Now, what I mean by being an epic multitasker is most uh, antioxidants have the ability to maybe neutralize one to three different free radical compounds at a time. Asaxanthin could neutralize 20 at a time. So when you combine the omega-3s with the asaxanthin, you are in a great spot with salmon. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into the next one, which is going to be in the vegetable category, good old fashioned avocados, which are technically a fruit, but who's really keeping track? All right, so we've got the carotenoids known as lutein and zeaxanthin. That's really cool and all, and we could focus on that, but that's just gonna waste your time. Let's talk about the unique stuff with avocados. Turns out that avocados have a unique sugar in them. Okay, this unique sugar is called AV119. Now, you might be thinking, sugar's inflammatory. Why the heck do I want sugar? And you're right, sugars are inflammatory. But this interesting study found that AV119 also blocks nuclear factor kappa B, just like the omega-3s do. Okay, so they found this out of the University of Naples, Italy. So really cool stuff. But here, let's have some more fun with it. So a 2013 study published in Food and Function found that literally just adding a little bit of avocado to a burger neutralized the inflammatory effects of having a burger. Does that mean that if you add avocado to your burger that every time it's gonna net neutral out the burger? No, not necessarily, but pretty cool research nevertheless that avocados are that anti-inflammatory. So they take the cake in the vegetable slash fruit category by all means. So the next one we're gonna talk about is gonna be dairy. Okay, dairy is by all means pretty inflammatory, but did you know that there's actually a certain kind of dairy that's anti-inflammatory? Hey, really quick, also I do wanna make sure if you're doing keto or if you're doing fasting or anything like that, you probably should check out Thrive Market down below. So a lot of the foods I'm talking about, you can get through Thrive, but I just wanna make sure that I just extend that out to you. So there's a special link down below. It's an online membership-based grocery store that ends up being a lot cheaper than the grocery store. Anyhow, I don't wanna waste your time. I just wanted to throw that out there. So after this video, check them out in the link down below. Okay, so what kind of dairy is anti-inflammatory? Well, goat. Okay, goat milk, 
and goat cheese. And fun fact, I don't know if you're doing low carb or keto, but this is gonna be really interesting to you. It turns out that the bacteria that gives goat cheese and goat milk its unique flavor is actually a bacteria that breaks down certain components of the cheese to become caprylic acid, which is a medium chain triglyceride, not to mention the most ketogenic medium chain triglyceride. So what that means is that unique flavor you get when you have goat cheese, that's actually the caprylic acid. That's a medium chain triglyceride, which goes into ketone production a lot easier. But there's another cool fact, okay? The Endocrine Metabolic and Immune Disorders Drug Targets Journal published an interesting study that found that literally just having a little bit of goat cheese ends up canceling out the immune system response to lipopolysaccharides. And I know I overuse the word literally, but this is just, I don't know, it literally is, right? What does that mean? Okay, so a lipopolysaccharide is a toxin that leaks out of the gut into the bloodstream, mainly in people that are suffering from a leaky gut. So anyone that has chronic inflammation probably has a leaky gut. So these lipopolysaccharides leach into the bloodstream and they cause a bunch of chaos. They trigger the immune system to activate. So for one reason or another, the bacteria that's in goat cheese seems to stop the immune response to those lipopolysaccharides. So the lipopolysaccharides are still getting into the bloodstream, but the body's just totally zenned out and they're just like, I'm not gonna react to you. I'm not gonna worry about it. Just keep doing your thing. So no immune response equals no inflammation. Boom, moving on. Green tea, the beverage category, all right? Gotta have an anti-inflammatory beverage and Sprite isn't gonna be it for you. Green tea, simply put, contains catechins. Okay, it's not the caffeine, it's not necessarily the antioxidants, it's the catechins themselves. Epigallocatechin 3 gallate, which is EGCG, you see it all over the place. Been shown in multiple studies to neutralize the most inflammatory cytokines that are out there. Interleukin-8 and tumor necrosis factor alpha. So plain and simple, sip on green tea throughout the day. Now we have the last one, which is going to be the best fat olive oil. Now this one is for the long term. Okay? I'm talking about all kinds of things that you can acutely reduce inflammation and, and drop you know, that inflammatory response and maybe get those resolvents upregulated, but olive oil comes in as the long term player, something you want to have a lot of throughout the course of your life to attenuate inflammation over time. All right, so what does that look like? Well, there's something in olive oil known as oleocanthal, and if you have a good quality olive oil, you know what it is because it stings the back of your throat. So if you have like a good quality olive oil, you'll feel that little tingle in your throat. Low quality olive oil doesn't have it because the oleocanthal is broken down. Well, the International Journal of Molecular Science has found that that oleocanthal is equal to ibuprofen in your body, a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. When it's equal to ibuprofen, what that means is it has a similar response in terms of being a cyclooxygenase enzyme inhibitor, which means that you have a whole lot of different effects in the body in controlling inflammation at its epicenter, but also at the joint level. It's a heck of a lot better than taking ibuprofen. Now, I'm not gonna say that you can just have a shot of olive oil and it's gonna replace ibuprofen, but when you look at it over the long term, it's gonna attenuate inflammation in a similar fashion and work along the similar pathways as a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory would work. So anyhow, here you have it. Five anti-inflammatory foods in different respective categories. Oh, and a quick bonus, if you want a spice, turmeric's gonna be the one, but I don't need to go on and on about that.